Hi everyone. Today we have uh, today we have with us Miss Parul Gupta, who's an ex IAS team, and before that she completed her bachelor's degree in computer science from Punjab Engineering College. Then she did her master's in computer science from IAS, and uh, before uh, her master's she was part of multiple organizations where she uh, uh, was part of the member of, member of technical staff. She was also an SD intern. and after her iisc masters degree she went to uh, amazon and worked in amazon as applied scientist and currently she is working as applied scientist too in amazon us so i'll hand it over to you now parul uh, you know, if you want to add anything else to your introduction and welcome hi hi manshu thanks for like having me here so uh, yeah like i did my uh, I'm tech from IIC, and right now I'm working with Amazon. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm based out of Chicago right now uh, in US. That's it. Sure, thank you. So, uh, I'll just start with a very small question, and I think uh, this question is um, like everybody uh, has gone through this. Uh, we are, we all share this common experience. That is the gate journey, right? So. I would like to ask you about your gate journey specifically. So, can you briefly describe what was your gate journey like? So, uh, my gate journey was like I would say interesting because uh, so initially before joining Gate Right, I was working with uh, one of the companies like it was a hedge fund, and I was not very happy with my job. And I had given multiple rounds of interviews also in other companies, but nothing good was coming my way. so i just thought of uh, you know resigning from that company and then uh, you know uh, i was just thinking like what else should can i do uh, right now and that is when my father suggested to give uh, you know uh, go for gate exam okay. uh, so uh, i remember like i was going through youtube and uh, i came across rbr's video on mm-hmm. gate and uh, like that's when i decided that i'll take his full course and that is how my journey started like with gate and most of it i would say because it was an online coaching that i was taking right i was not in contact with a lot of people who were preparing for gates so i would say my preparation solely took place i think in isolation and right. yeah i think that was it i since i was working uh, i was preparing for gate full time for 3 4, 4 months i would say mm-hmm. and Yeah, like it was interesting uh, in a way because you know uh, you're always scared that what if you don't crack gate, what if you don't get a good college, what will happen? Uh, because I was not working at that time, but everything like went well. And, yeah. Right. So, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, what I can hear from what you just said uh, is that your motivation for gate at that time was monotonicity from uh, what you were doing. Uh, Uh, back then, right? Am I correct? Sort of. Not only monetary, like I, I wanted to explore other options. I wanted to go for uh, higher education. Uh, right. I'm not sure whether I wanted to do uh, MS. Like everybody does their MS in from US, right? I was not sure whether yeah. I wanted to do it at that time. And right, like sort of. Uh, I was kind of bored also. Like I, I would say a little bored of what I was doing and wanted to go for higher education and get. seem like a good uh, uh, exam to prepare for at that point of time yeah. right sure okay that's great so uh, let's now jump to your mtech life directly because uh, that's what you did after your gate exam you uh, went for mtech uh, in from iisc so what was your mtech life like uh, back then means uh, everybody says that you suddenly uh, feel like you have given gate exam and uh, a lot of Pressure was on you, and uh, you feel like you have conquered a lot. And then you move to IISC or IITs, and then you feel like uh, we did nothing till now. Now the battle starts. So was it like that for you, or what was the overall experience for you? Uh, the overall experience is amazing. I would say at IISC was amazing. Like what you said is also true. Like I was really happy when I joined IISC. Right, I thought it's going to be amazing. I'll get to learn a lot, which I did, of course. But I didn't expect, you know, that the curriculum uh, would be so rigorous. The courses would be so rigorous when I joined IIC. Like first semester, uh, I remember that, uh, uh, you know, I used to I, I sort of uh, broke down once, I think, because of you know how stressful the environment was. But then starting second semester, you know, when you kind of get used to what you are doing, like 
I eased in into the atmosphere of IIC. I realized like it's an amazing place to learn, right? I started appreciating the kind of people, um, you know, I was studying with my batchmates, like best of the minds that you can get in the country, the professors that I was studying from. So all in all, it was an amazing experience. I realized like what I did in BTEC was not much, right? Uh, like we used to hardly study there or just study uh, one night before the exams and, you know, go ahead and give an exam. But I realized that IIC is completely different. Uh, you need to be quick, you need to be thorough, you know, you, you need to go back and on a daily basis revise like what what you're being taught uh, yeah. in the class. And, you know, uh, that is where I developed this habit of reading uh, papers, like research papers, you know, staying up to date of what is happening in the uh, research area mm-hmm. in the tech industry. So, yeah, all in all, it was an amazing experience. I have like amazing memories of IIC, I would say. Right. So... Uh, if I were to pinpoint on something particular, what would be um, the one thing that you, before joining ISC, you expected that ISC would uh, means provide you with, and what it actually provided you with? Was there any difference, or uh, was it the same thing? What was it like? It was more or less the same thing. Like I knew that the quality of education that I'll be getting uh, from ISC would be different, but I did not realize like where I'm going. You know in terms of uh, the heaviness of the curriculum. Like I do not expect it to be that heavy, to be, the courses to be that rigorous and the learning to be, you know, be uh, so much exponential, um, I would say. So, yeah, more or less it was the same, but it was also a humbling experience. Like initially, you know, when I got like this rank, I was really happy, you know, how uh, I got a good rank and everything. But once I joined the IIC, I realized that everybody around here had, you know, had similar yeah. amazing ranks, right? They were all the sharp mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a humbling experience, like studying with such brilliant people. Sure. So we did talk about uh, IIC right now, but uh, most of it was uh, around studies only. Of course, uh, I means IIC is known for its rigorous curriculum, uh, the quality of education, obviously. But other than the quality of education, other than the studies, uh, what else um, can one get from their experience from IIC means? Apart from just the studying experience, what else is there for people to explore at IIC in terms of um, experiences or maybe in terms of other activities uh, that people kind of do there, something like that? Right. So there are a lot of activities also. Uh, we have uh, we have a sports uh, building, right, where you can go for badminton, play a lot of sports, table tennis, badminton. Uh, uh, we have a crown uh Cricket ground people, you know, uh, their uh, sports like cricket, kho kho, uh, disc, frisbee, uh, right? All these sports are also there. These there are these activities, and we have marathons. Like Bangalore as a city has a lot of marathons. You can participate there. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are different clubs also. I would say like there, there's this dance club, there's music club that you can roll yourself into, uh, and a lot of uh, we have this open day. Uh, uh, CSA right. Open Day, right? Uh, the yeah. IIC Open Day, where a lot of departments, all, all the departments take part. So you can help in organizing if you're into organizing stuff. Uh, and things. Yeah. So uh, apart from uh, research, you know, apart from education, uh, it's I think an overall development because uh, there are a lot of other avenues. If you're interested in dance, mm-hmm. sports, like you can explore all these activities. There's a gym as well for people who are interested in gym on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. yeah, of course, but uh, you you must make time out for your busy schedule. As ha, well. that, that is true. That is true. <laughs> the first year, if you're an MTech uh, course, uh, then most of the first year goes into completing your coursework. Second year onwards, you have to, you have to start getting free time and you start exploring these activities. And there's always a small outside nearby IIC where you can always go you know, in case you want to watch movies. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my next question would be around, uh, you just said that uh, when you moved from your BTEC to MTEC, you experienced a drastic shift from the uh, from the environment that you had there, where you would, uh, means most people uh, would study in their BTEC from tier two, tier three colleges for uh, one day or maybe a week before the exam and just uh, pass on the, pass the exam. And, uh, and I, I, I am a living testament of that, that uh, you can do really, really good. Uh, in your semester exams with just one week of study, one week of study and something like that. 
uh so uh, you had that similar experience as well so uh, one question that i would like to ask because i have heard this from multiple people that uh, when you go to mtech the projects that you do within your uh, this courses uh, they would feel like the projects that you did during your btech uh, during your btech uh, that final year project so uh, what you have done some projects during your btech as well as during your mtech right so what has been the difference in the two in terms of approach how you approach those projects and uh, the knowledge requirements that you had and the learning outputs from those projects during your btech versus your mtech right so uh, the projects that we did during a btech and mtech right they are like i would say poles apart so um, even some of the uh, assignments uh, that we did at iic right that could be considered as a that can be compared to a btech final year project so right. those were uh the assignments were the, that rigorous so uh, first of all uh, during btech the projects that we used to work on uh, during a btech so uh, I, i remember like sitting down just one week uh, before our final deadline and that is when we started the implementation right and then i used to work and then get it done i don't think we had the required information or the required knowledge uh to complete the btech project like most of it used to be just google get code get get a code from somewhere here and there you know kind of just uh make it work somehow and get results and present it in front of a professor but that was not the case um, at iic even the even for the assignments like even for the assignments we had to uh like understand what the first of all we had to understand what the assignment was all about sometimes uh it was hard figuring out what you were meant to do so uh, you had to constantly uh, again like i i would say just constantly uh, understand like what is happening like what what you're being taught uh and basis that you know um, i remember i learned python uh, while doing one of our assignments i did not know it before so okay. some of the languages tools right you had to learn simultaneously while you were trying to solve your assignments uh okay. and yeah so for some cases i think for some of the project even for the final year mtech project uh, it was sort of a research project you know we had to write a research paper at the completion and you know it was always appreciated if you are able to get a, a your paper published in a ista conference like any conference so uh, and in fact that uh, for doing that you know we had to come up with our own problem statement uh, it was not something that the professor would give it to you uh, it was so we had to uh, read a lot of research papers uh, just to you know formulate our problem and then uh, on a regular basis have conversations with our professor like we were, where we were heading what we were doing uh, how can we uh, you know uh, make it like improve uh, uh, our accuracy like w- whatever project that we were working on whatever model that we were developing so it was a constant process and it was not something that you know could be done within one week um, it was it was i think six years six months of effort uh, implementation effort that had to be put into it and six months we used to just you know study research papers to understand formulate a problem understand how we can solve it so yeah right Yeah, so one interesting question that I have here uh, is that because right now you're working in the industry uh, in the same field that you did a lot of your projects in um, during your MTech, that is machine learning and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, one question that I have here is that uh, how much of the projects that you did during your master reflects the projects that you're uh, that the industry is working on, the problem statements that the industry is working on. because we have seen a drastic shift uh, from 2017 just to go into the technical jargon here that uh, we moved from transformer to large language models uh, for, right. within this 4 to 5 year and the landscape has changed completely so just uh, on that note uh, how does iisc or I- iits uh, their mtech curriculum keeps up with these uh, industrial changes or industrial uh, movements uh so how much of your masters projects reflect the reflected the industry back then right so first of all uh, you know uh, you mentioned this right so uh, i see me right there are no books from mm. uh, which you're taught like so, uh, they'll not give you this book is your syllabus and chapter 1 2 3 4 is what will come in the exam so then that is not the way like some of the pro- uh, professors really encourage you know uh, some of the advanced classes that we take professors really encourage us to go through papers uh so uh, that is how one way uh, you know where a professor is also keep us updated uh, with what is happening and as well as uh, your industry uh, experience and you know my iic projects is concerned so uh, 
I would say not completely, uh, not in all of the projects, but of course, things have been changing constantly, right? But industry also, I would say, is not always, uh, you know, the kind of problems that we're working on. It's not always that we are applying state of the art. Sometimes you do have to fall, ba fall back on, you know, easier models, uh, like simpler models. When I say simpler models, I mean uh, falling back on a neural network, deep in and in. It's not always that we're working with, uh, uh, like, complex models. So, uh, I would say that the knowledge that I gained, uh, you know, I was working mostly on social networks, like learning embeddings or different nodes and edges. I mm -hmm. use that knowledge to solve one problem uh, during uh, one of my Amazon projects. And I was able to like apply that kind of knowledge. Of, uh, so I would say uh, I have learned a lot. What I learned at IIC, I was successfully able to like, it gets used. It's not like it's a waste, it gets used. Uh, you have to, again, in the industry as well, you have to keep on updating yourself with the latest information, like latest models right. that are there. But it's not like it's a complete waste of, waste of time, like what you were doing during your IAC uh, right. projects. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, on that note only, there's just a small segue here that, uh, you, that you are working on machine learning, artificial intelligence in the industry. You did your projects just going one step uh, one step before that uh, what actually made you decide that you'll be pursuing your career or you'll be pursuing your projects during your masters in machine learning and artificial intelligence and were there any other considerations at that point right so uh, to be like uh, you know to tell you the truth when i joined iic i did not know like I had met a lot of students, like a lot of my batchmates knew that they wanted to go, uh, you know, with a, like they wanted to join a machine learning lab, but that was not the case with me. I had come like, uh, I'm okay with anything, even if I like systems, I'll just try out different courses first. And if I like those courses, uh, if I like systems courses, maybe I'll join a systems lab. If I like machine right. learning courses, maybe I'll go ahead with a machine learning lab. So in my case, what happened is I've always been like more inclined towards, I would say maths, like, you know, uh, so for machine learning, the prerequisites are probability and LA. like I was sort of more interested in those subjects as compared to, you know, the systems or the theory theory. I did not like much. I took algorithms. I was not much interested. It becomes too theoretical and systems also. I was OK with it, uh, I, I would say, but I was more inclined towards these courses. And uh, from there uh, on, like uh, I, I thought of, you know, ML might be a good fit for me. Uh, and in the second semester is when I started exploring ML related courses. I remember taking two ML courses and I loved like whatever was being taught to me, whatever I was learning, right? It was, I, I really enjoyed studying those courses. And that is when I decided that I wanted to go ahead and uh, take you know, an ML lab. And later on also, like I wouldn't say like a lot of uh, right now, ML is in demand as well. So that was also an influencing uh, factor uh for me uh that i knew that uh, you know a lot of companies have uh, open data science profiles uh so that also helps of course uh but i would say majorly it was my interest in those courses probability la yeah that yeah. and of course the professor taking me in his lab <laughs> because it's also important that the professor should be interested in taking you yeah. in lab. so luckily i got one so uh, did you have any uh, past experience with uh, AI ML or was uh, IAC your first introduction to the field? No, IAC was my first introduction. Like I mentioned, I did not know, like people knew, people had clarity that they want to go ahead with, uh, with, with machine learning, but I had no idea. Uh, I'd never worked on ML models before this. Like IAC okay. was the first place where I got introduced to ML. Right, okay. So now coming back to uh, where we left off, uh, that was that you did a lot, now it means you, started learning about machine learning you did a lot of projects now let's uh, let's talk about your placement experience at uh, iisc so because mm -hmm. uh, placement is something i think uh, iiscians if not uh, look down on they at least frown upon because uh, it's something like why why would you even talk about uh, placements when you're at iisc so uh, still i would like to talk about it because it's uh, still uh, a major consideration for a lot of people while joining mtech programs that uh, what is the placement like so uh, i i'm not going to ask you what is the placement like uh, in terms of um, what is it in terms of uh, ctcs or something like that but i would like to ask you how, what was your personal experience of preparing for the placements and uh, uh, 
uh, what was the of course the schedule itself at iic is a lot busier than uh, a lot of the other places in this country now uh, so what was overall experience in terms of these things right so i think at iic uh, you know after you complete your first year and uh, you get two or three months of summer uh, term so that is when most of your preparation starts for the summer for, for the placements because company starts coming in august and you i think your uh, summer term starts sometime uh, sometime in may so you get two to two months for preparation so uh, now what you said is like uh, true like professors there would encourage you to go for higher education right go for phd's right. and stuff like that and they want you like they're not m- much inclined towards you going for uh, 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 an industry right joining an industry but it's not they'll stop they'll not stop you they'll just motivate you to go ahead for a phd that's it uh and i don't know what the situation is right now but i see just when we joined a year back only had got its placement cell uh, uh i think set up and there were a lot of companies that visited our campus right uh, a lot of companies i'm pretty sure that the situation now has improved much more than what it was before uh, a lot many companies i think would be visiting mm-hmm. but what i want to point out here is that uh, my placement experience was good like i got placed from campus into jp morgan amazon i that, at that point of time it, it did not come to our campus uh, okay. right for as roles like i think for software development i'm not sure whether it needs to come or not but for as role i think it did not visit campuses in india right. so uh, right so a part like going through that entire process you get two months to prepare yourself for placements it's more or less the same for, across all the campuses but i want to point out is that uh, you know uh, after we got our job offers like i was not happy with my job offer like i wanted to explore more and a lot of other people as well uh, they were happy with their jobs but mm. in general they wanted to you know uh, study more like gain more knowledge before joining industry so i remember that sometime in march when we were about to complete a second semester initially i and sachin right uh, we started studying we thought that we'll apply off campus as well because you know it's always good to apply off campus uh, you get better jobs uh, job opportunities there so we started studying as and you know when we were studying a lot of people around us a batchmate started joining us and their purpose was not to uh, get a job but their purpose was to just learn right so at the end like everyone started joining everyone started contributing to this uh, to, to our discussion and think at the end we were a group of 8 to 10 people and everyone used to take up one topic and on a daily basis used to meet that one person used to uh, you know read about that topic and then the next day he used to come and teach all of us about that topic right all the in depth right. integrities of that topic everything so uh, that is what i got at iic i'm not sure whether you will get that kind of an experience uh, at other colleges i'm not sure but this is we were very easily able to form a study group not only for campus place, placements but because people were generally uh, you know genuinely interested in understanding what is happening right yeah so that was amazing and i think the contacts at uh, iic right like your professors have really amazing contacts with uh, industries like they're working with them so uh, i remember uh, uh, me going to my uh, professor right uh, he got me a job interview with like a very good uh, company uh, because the vp of that company was a student so he was able to get me an interview over there mm-hmm. and i like one of the phd's from my lab he was able to get me an interview with amazon right oh, so right. the contacts also really help like these people have amazing contacts so that also uh, i think helps yeah yeah and yeah, i'm still awestruck by the fact that uh, iisc started their placements in just two to three years before uh, uh, means in 2020 or 21 i would say no it was there it was there i'm not saying that it was not there it was there but i think formally well established kind of a cell happened i think just one or two 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 three years back it was placements were always there at iisc yeah. but it was mostly focused towards uh, you know mostly focused towards uh, sending mm. students for higher education yeah and uh, on 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 that note as well that uh, you formed a group of 8 to 10 people and people were joining just for the heck of it uh that i think is quite rare because uh, believe me i have also tried that during my btech trying to do that with people doesn't happen very rare 
that uh, people just join for the heck of it and that doesn't happen so get a job people are like they've got a job we don't want anything else. yeah 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 but that was not the case so that was uh, something really amazing i learned a lot from that study group that we mm-hmm. have formed yeah so basically it was a uh, a uh, 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 an environment where you find found like minded people uh, who just wanted to learn for the heck of it so that's also right. something that i think uh, 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 sets apart iics or um, iits or these mtech programs from the other ones um, throughout the world i would say uh, yeah so that's true yeah also the environment is very open you can always walk up to a professor right to understand like i did not get this or you can always ask your batchmate and they are very you know happy to help everyone at iic or batchmates including your batchmates are happy to help you like if you have not understood anything they'll help like they'll discuss or you know they'll tell you whatever they know so it's a very right. conducive environment for learning yeah okay so uh now just uh moving one step ahead from placement that uh, you joined the industry so you worked previously in the industry before joining your mtech program uh, as well It means after your btech you uh, worked in uh, for some mm-hmm. organization and then you joined your mtech program and then again you worked from uh, for, you are working for some organization right now so what has been the difference that you have observed back then the uh, kind of environment that uh, you were getting after your btech in the industry versus the kind of environment that you are getting right now in the industry has uh, the attitude of people around you changed or the kind of uh, people that you are surrounded with changed or something like that what what has been the shift in those terms so uh, for me personally uh, right the kind of environment like the kind of people that i was working with before and now is completely different like at amazon i think most of the people that i'm working with right all of them are into research it's a research oriented team uh, so most of them are phd's at uh, during my uh, btech the job that i was working on it was a hedge fund so the environment was completely different like uh, i would say like people like there used to be a lot of parties that used to happen right uh, there was lunches and everything and the, the kind of work i would say was not satisfactory uh, was i was not happy with it but over here uh, i would say it's a complete shift uh, you're working with again with the best minds right uh, working on best technologies uh, solving you know problems of using i am i'm solving a problem right now using rl we are trying to apply that reinforcement learning right. uh, at amazon so yeah like there's a huge shift i would say uh, even your understanding right what you're implementing you, you you get to you, like what are the pipelines that are being built how can you solve a paper or sorry solve a problem so you start thinking more you get a lot of lot lot more ownership right on a project like i remember in my previous uh, like the job that i did after btech my manager used to tell me you're supposed to do this this, this and that's it like right. he used to tell me over here we get a lot of freedom so we are the ones we we get a problem but we are the ones who you know supposed to come up with the solution go through papers uh, see what can be implemented and then we are the ones who come up with the solution and implement it and you know are responsible for it so uh, i would say there is a shift in the kind of job that i am doing right now yeah there's a change right so you also shifted uh, not just from uh, one spectrum of the of the industry to another but you also shifted from india to a different country as well for work right so you shifted to united states so what has that experience uh, helped you learn or what has that experience contributed uh, to you so uh, like shifting here working over here right i think the experience has been good like amazing i would say for me if you're asking me what is the difference uh, that i found right working there in india and here i would say the difference for me has not been much because at, because at amazon again a lot of people that i'm working with are like indians so and i would say there's not much shift in the in the environment as well like uh, I, i think back in india as well the environment at amazon has been always very like my managers have been supportive right uh, even if i have to take leave no one is going to question you if you're taking leave right whether you have applied for leave on portal or not or uh, 
you know they just want you to complete your work at the end of the day that's it they don't care where you're working from you're working from your home you're working from here there you know which part of the country you're working on from just get your work done and i think that is a case over here also nobody really cares if you're taking going on leaves what you're doing where you're working from over here also i'm working from home right. uh, so it's the same environment i think the same kind of problems also uh, over there also uh, i was solving problem in the, in the for the indian marketplace over here also the problems that i'm solving right are more or less kind of it's the same kind of problems uh, so for me the change has not been much uh, yes that yeah. to say that's all uh, do you feel that there's um, the kind of problems that uh, uh, maybe a smaller company a, a startup or maybe a mid tier company works on versus the kind of problems that you know, amazon is working on or any you know, big organization like amazon walmart and any other organization uh, is working on is, is there uh, some difference in the kind of problems that problem statements that uh, these uh, three spectrums have uh i think uh, it depends uh, as well uh, on the company also uh, so like my team right it's right. it's it's kind of a research and a product not a product but you know implementation team like we have to uh, deploy models and you know get results also mm-hmm. simultaneously we have to uh, go ahead with research like publishing a paper is expected from you like it's highly encouraged that you go ahead and publish a paper so this is my team at amazon now again uh, there are other teams as well at amazon where you know uh, where you have we are supposed to mostly deploy uh, models into production right so I, i think it depends on the kind of team or the kind of company you are in that is the case with amazon mid tier uh, companies as well most a lot of companies are doing amazing research work and some of them are mostly you know because a lot of startups they have to give out quick results they're building a product you know uh, right. so they also want uh, deployments quick deployments mm-hmm. so it completely depends the kind of company uh, you're working with okay great yeah. so uh, because a lot of the people uh, right, who will be joining masters program or who are in the master program uh, would be preparing for specific roles now because uh, ml has predominantly uh, started dominating the job market as well um, so uh just on that tangent i would like to ask you about the specific uh, specifics of your job like what makes uh, a good applied scientist like uh, what is expected out of you um, when you join as an applied scientist what knowledge is expected out of you what would you want uh, somebody who is uh, preparing for these job roles to be prepared for or, or to be knowing when they are joining their work right so i think first of all to prepare for the interviews uh, right uh, i think having a basic knowledge uh, understanding probability la uh, will surely help uh, you know uh, your uh, deep learning models back propagation uh, algorithms right classic machine learning right. algorithms you have uh, your pca right xg boost models like in depth understanding of these uh, what is happening not just you know on a upper level but you know all those back propagation equation uh, equations uh, all the theories like everything whatever is there you have to study that uh, that is important and once you get a role once you start working on your models right mm-hmm. being uh, under like just staying up to date with what is happening like one habit which is really important is reading your research papers uh, regularly so that keeps you up to date you know what is happening uh, you know the state of the art and if you are able to apply that that's amazing as well like knowing coding python you know tensor flow or pytorch like whatever suits you whichever framework suits you so that is also uh, important and yeah i think it quickly able to adapt according to the environment i think these are some of the qualities that makes a good applied scientist right sure i guess so, uh, one last question that i have uh, and it's on the on, on a similar note like uh, you you told us what somebody should be prepared for if they're preparing for their job role in the specific area so you apart from what you learned during your masters during your bachelors uh, at the start of it what would you uh, want your younger self to be prepared for for maybe before you you would have started your bachelors you would have started your masters and now you would have started your uh, 
uh, like job so what what would you have wanted yourself to be prepared for to be prepared for i don't know just be uh, i think we put a lot of stress you know uh, thinking about what will happen in the future whether i'm doing good or not you know what will happen just don't stress a lot just keep on working right uh, i think that is the only advice i would give to my uh, younger self right yeah just stay motivated and don't stress like take it easy everything will work out right so yeah the yeah. those are all my questions and uh, thank you parul for taking out the time and uh, answering all the questions that i had and uh, i can assure you that this would help a lot of future aspirants as well as the people who are currently pursuing their master uh, hopefully they would learn from your experience they would take away some uh, great great information from this interview so thank you uh, for all the time that you have given us yeah thanks thanks like it was amazing talking to you uh, i'm not sure like how <laughs> uh, how helpful this has been but yeah it was happy to i was happy to share my thoughts like uh, yeah. with you yeah thank you yeah thank you